Hey, and welcome to Morning Coffee with Passionate Homeschooler. I'm Deanna, and today I want to talk to you about something that might be on a lot of people's minds if your kids are enrolled in a regular kind of traditional school program at a public or private school. And that is what is going to happen this fall when school is expected to return. Well, school districts across the country have been sending out surveys. They started about a month ago, and those survey results are starting to roll in. In Hillsborough County, Florida, 53,000 parents responded to the survey, and about half of them said they were not comfortable sending their kids back to school. And places like in North Carolina, there are school districts in Mississippi and Indianapolis that have decided to do a fully online virtual schooling program for the fall. So this leaves a lot of parents kind of scrambling about what they should do. Now, there are reasons why parents would want to decide to not send their kids back to school in the fall. The most obvious one is obvious um, is the virus, right? The pandemic that's happening, um, cases are coming back up, and so parents are a little trepidatious about sending their kids to school. Definitely understandable. Also, parents may have had a little more insight into what their kids are learning, and they may not necessarily agree with the curriculum that the schools are providing. That's another reason that I've heard from parents about why they're considering taking their kids out of school and possibly homeschooling them. And another reason is that parents want to have more of a say in what their kids are learning. They want to be more involved and having this little kind of snippet in the spring of being involved in the kids learning may have inspired them to want to take a kind of a larger role in that responsibility as a parent. Now, I do have to tell you that what happened in spring is not homeschooling because the schools were scrambling, the school districts and individual schools were scrambling to move to a virtual platform using Zoom or other course management applications. And the school was still deciding the curriculum and the parents were having to negotiate oftentimes their own work schedule with the kids learning schedule and arranging Zoom meetings for everybody in the household. That's not homeschooling. I So, you know, I, I saw a lot of people on Facebook, all of a sudden I'm a homeschool mom and I understand that you're now helping with schooling at home. But homeschooling is completely different than what a lot of families were kind of forced to do this spring. So I wanna break down some things um, about homeschooling for families that are considering it this fall. First off, homeschooling is a lifestyle. It is a totally different way of looking at educating your kids. You decide the curriculum, and it's not something that you have to feel you need to be an expert in. You don't need to be an, a third grade teacher in order to do this because there are so many resources online. There are secular, if you don't want to have religion in the curriculum, if you do want to integrate religion into the curriculum, there are a lot of religious um, offerings as well and different denominations. So the curriculum that you can use is out there and it's pretty easy to find. There are repositories that list curriculum and so we'll put a couple links in the description below. Um, if you, this is something that you want to start considering and start looking for, um, different opportunities for you to teach on, you know, teach your own kids. So the first thing is that you decide what they're learning. You decide their schedule. Now, if you talk to families that have been homeschooling, you'll realize that what they do does not mirror the traditional classroom. It's not where the kids are sitting at a desk for six hours a day and they spend 50 minutes on math and then they have a 10 minute recess and then they come back and then they're doing, you know, 20 minutes silent reading and then 30 minutes grammar. Now you can definitely have a regimented schedule where it takes that long, but honestly, it does not take that long to teach your kids. And part of the reason why the classroom takes so much longer is that the teacher has to teach usually about 30 students in, on average. Um, they have to teach 30 students that are at varying levels 
And so it takes a little more time because you're gonna get more questions. The nice thing about homeschooling, you get to customize it. You can teach at the level that your third grader is at and you can work to bring them up if they're struggling in reading or if they excel in math, then you can speed ahead and maybe they're doing fifth grade math when they're in third grade. You control that and it's you know really individualized to your individual kids and that's a wonderful thing. So it doesn't take six or seven hours to go through all of these subjects. Another thing, you don't have to do them every day. You control what you do and when you do it and also how you do it. A great way to teach math is by cooking. So if you enjoy cooking, bring your kids into the kitchen and all of a sudden you're learning percentages and fractions because you need a half a cup of milk for the recipe. Well, how much is that compared to a whole cup? Well, half is half, that's 50%. Voila, it's a math lesson. And so homeschooling is where the whole world is your classroom. It's not these four walls with desks where students have to, you know, not wiggle in their seat and not talk. It's a much more lively experience. And so when you're homeschooling and if you make that decision, this is something to think about. Another thing homeschoolers do is they meet up with other families that are homeschooling. And so if you're really good at math, say you're an engineer or you have an engineering background, then you can work with another family who maybe their parent um, was an English major or a French major in school. And so they can teach those subjects to your kids and you can teach the math to their kids. And so you start forming these groups and there are also a lot of organized co-ops that do the same thing, where parents pull their, um, basically their intellectual resources together to share the load of teaching kids. There are also online programs that you can do. There are curriculum packets that you can download that you can you know, use, they come with answer keys. Um, Pizan Academy offers a great literature curriculum for middle school and high school. And so, you know, there are these things that are just these packets of information. So you don't have to be an expert in everything in order to homeschool, but you do need to realize that it is a lifestyle and there's going to be some changing and there's going to be some things that you need to adapt to. You also need to get, you know, buy-in from your kids. You, they need to understand that, yes, you're now, you know, home is now school also. So it doesn't mean that it's eight hours of video games and a free-for-all. Now, if you have to work as well as homeschool, there are boundaries that have to be set up, that this is my work zone, and um, we're, we have a checklist that you can download on whether or not you should homeschool, and there's another checklist on creating boundaries and coming together as a family and coming up with some, you know, not rules where it's very harsh, but just some guidelines of what this new universe is going to be looking like for your family. So we'll put links in the description below. You can sign up and get those downloads um, from Passionate Homeschooler and Pizan Academy. So. I hope this has been helpful in describing what homeschooling is, um, the difference of what was going on when the school shut down and everybody, including families and schools, were scrambling to figure out how to get these, um, all the kids educated in a totally different environment. And um, we hope that you do consider homeschooling and really decide to own the ideas and the learning experience that your children are having because it is so rich for the entire family and it can really bring people together. And if you're worried about some of the things like socialization and stuff, you're in control. You get to choose to bring your kids to co-ops or find other families that are in your area and connect the kids. So really those old sort of ideas about homeschooling being this kind of weird or unusual or only certain people do it, I think that is all very much um, a farce and not reality of what homeschooling and the richness that it provides for a family is. Well, thank you for watching. If you're enjoying our videos, please like them, share them with your friends. If you know of a homeschooling family or a family that is considering homeschooling, please share this video with them. We really wanna help parents in this time of 
kind of new anxieties about educating kids. Uh, we also have a Facebook and Instagram account. We'll put the links in the description below. Have a great day and we'll see you next time.